Premiership round four, quite the weekend of games. Uh, a couple of nail biters, and that one on Friday, which seems like an age ago now, the uh, the Bristol Harlequins game. Goodness gracious me, I was tempted to do a video just on that game. But, um, yeah, children and stuff for the weekend got in the way. But either way, man, uh, pretty entertaining weekend of rugby. For the most part, good results for the home teams, apart from London Irish. But, um, yeah, we'll go through the games pretty briefly as much as we can, some of the stats, and uh, how the teams are looking throughout the season thus far, who they got next week. And, um, yeah, you guys can let me know your thoughts. So the first one, like I mentioned... Harlequins and Bristol. I knew I was in for something because before I even got a chance to see the result, I had messages from people saying, have you seen this game? I want you to react to this game. Tell me what you think of this game. Uh, man, Bristol will be getting nightmares about comebacks from Harlequins, eh? What a game. But honestly, bonkers stuff. Like Bristol get three tries. Joyce Purdy and Piatel get tries. Like the 26th minute is the final, <laughs> the final score from them. Uh, and then Quinns, it's two from Liner, one to Esther Hazen, Northmore, Collier, Green, Smith, and Dombrant. And how many of these tries are just like world-class tries? It's, it's almost bonkers. Like, you want to be angry at Bristol for conceding 52 points, but you can't blame them for some of those tries, man. I mean, what did I say? I mean, Harlequins had a try... Uh, chalked off early, to be fair, that forward pass one from, um, I think it was, was it Liner's pass? It was Green, Tyrone Green, uh, Liner. They chalked it off for a forward pass, which was unlucky. Uh, Randall looked pretty dangerous for, for Bristol with those sniping runs. And yeah, man, they had a 21-0 lead after like 26 minutes. Uh, Liner did did get one back, like I mentioned, on, on 28. That kind of stopped the momentum. Bristol kicked the penalty though, 24-7. After a 50-22, I might add. So they actually looked a couple of times for the 50-22 and they, they managed to kick one of them. And uh, I thought, to be fair, Bristol even started the second half pretty strong. But Marcus Smith, who'd come on, I think, maybe earlier than, than we had expected, um, he managed to find gaps where they are seemingly not there. You only need to give him half a yard, man. And the, the Harlequin's hands... Uh, phenomenal. Um, the Fords, when they couldn't get in from close range at one point, they gave it to the um, the backs. Don Brant with the offload, like he might as well have the hands of a back, I guess. Uh, Bristol end up with a yellow card. There's some handbags, and at the time I saw the handbags, I was kind of thinking, I feel like Bristol knows something's up here because they were they were under the pump, they were still in the lead, but not. For, um, not for long, man. Um, Collier's try. <laughs> that was his first in the Premiership after 134 games. Um, even with a dummy. Like, bonkers, bonkers stuff. Um, three tries during the yellow card. So, yeah, Green gets the third one. Like, oh, I don't know what to say. Can't do it justice. I'm sure you've seen the highlights because... The average Premiership game, I think it's around 40,000 views on the, the highlights packages. This game had like 150,000. It created that kind of buzz. Um, Smith's, Marcus Smith's grubber one was unbelievable bit of individual skill. That's what I'm talking about. You can't be mad when a guy can do that kind of stuff to you. So um, just really magic. I mean, run meters is 704 to 400. Like 700 run meters in a top flight game is a, is a lot. Like, I think the All Blacks put 1,000 on Tonga when they beat them by 100 points. So for them to get 700 is, is a, quite an achievement. 704 to 400. 400 is not low by Bristol, but man. Uh, defenders beaten 22 to 17. Clean breaks 12 to 5. 12 clean breaks in a game is also a stupidly high amount. Don Brandt finishes with two try assists, a try. 90 odd run meters, three clean breaks, two defenders beaten, 17 from 17 tackles, and Eddie Jones was there to see it all. So, man, you got some good number eight choices over in England. Um, green, 147 run meters. I think I've literally seen games where a team hasn't got 147 run meters, albeit sometimes pretty dire ones to watch. But yeah, um, six defenders beaten for him, a clean break. Vui in a losing effort, 12 from 12 tackles. But man, what can you say? Like, it was just a game full of absolute magic. It's one of the best ones that you will ever see.
in any league with any teams playing. Uh, I think pretty much everyone enjoyed that, apart from Bristol fans, and maybe even Bristol fans could have a smile at some of the skill that was on display, even if it's against your team, you've still got to admire it. So yeah, man, Quinns, three from three for them. Very vocal crowd, I have to admit, so that was kind of good to see. They were, they were certainly treated to the price of admission. Bristol are now one and three, so they're in 12th, whereas Harlequins are in second. Uh, Quinns are away to Sale, who are having a wee bit of trouble of their own, and um, Newcastle await bristol so it's an away match for bristol it could be a pretty tough one heading up north but anyway uh we will see speaking of pretty tough uh worcester did it pretty tough in their game against exeter i didn't watch this one in full um you can always tell one of the games is the not favored game in terms of uh, whichever games they're promoting and the, when when uh, flatman is doing the commentary on his own i know they have other commentators who sometimes do it on their own and it, it's a nice reprieve from Austin Healy at times to just have one person in flats. Um, some people mentioned it in the YouTube comments of the highlights. It's like it's like sitting next to a guy in the pub who's just telling you what's happening. It's uh, I, I don't mind it. I know some people probably don't seem to, to dig his um, his commentary, but I, I quite enjoyed uh, flats telling me what was going on. But yeah, man, forty two five. That's a big old hiding in it. Uh, interesting to see Exeter wear that jersey. Was that a one-off, like NHS, like, uh, appreciation jersey, or is that their regular away kit? Because it was certainly different, like all blue with the rainbow stripe down the middle with the NHS on the front. That was, um, something I hadn't seen before, so, um, yeah. But man, tries, Ewers got one, Sam Simmons got two, like, I'm talking about number eights in England, um, Cordero got two, magic feet, two in two minutes, like, seriously some um, some proper steps joe simmons got one i thought he'd almost butchered it to be to be fair but he managed to get it down uh one at the death to click for worcester so at least they got on the board but it took 78 minutes um it did take exeter a while to score that was like nil all for the first 20 um but sure enough they, they managed to crack it and then sam simmons got of course he got one he ends up getting two kind of pick and goes early but the backs did get into it like as you're thinking it's all the fords tries nah like Cordero's one was um yeah probably back smooth um some 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 good agile feet like what can you say it was a it was a proper mix of, of everybody um Worcester apart from getting on the board I don't know what else really to say um that's that's a bit of a hiding I mean I know Duane van der Merwe was back and he had some decent numbers um 64 run meters three defenders beaten but man all the Exeter Guys seem to cro uh, clock up great numbers. Sam Simmons, Cordero, O'Flaherty, Ewers all had five plus defenders beaten. Um, there was 180 tackles made to 98. So, yeah, and Worcester missed. Like, if you take the attempt, it's 200 plus tackles. So, long day, tough day at the office. Possession 56 44, territory 61 39. Like everything is just exit amount. Eleven to five the clean breaks. Knock ons though, fourteen to ten, so that's a little bit higher than you would have expected. It didn't seem to be particularly bad weather or anything, but um yeah, man, big win. Exit with their big guns back. Certainly put in a good shift after a kind of, you know, surprising start to the season with a couple of losses. But yeah, they're, they're sitting pretty now. Two and two. They are up to sixth. Uh Worcester a tenth. One win and three losses for them. So yeah, looking a wee bit Looking a wee bit hairy, but we'll see how they go next week. Um, they are at home to Leicester, who haven't dropped any results yet. Although, Leicester are not exactly blowing teams off the park. So, don't know. And uh, Exeter, they are away to Wasps. So, that could be a pretty tough place to go. Um, seeing as they got a win in their game as well. But anyway, we'll kind of have to wait and see. Uh, the next one, Gloucester and Sale. I did watch this one. And it's a weird one in that I knew the result because I was like, I want to pick one more game to watch. I'd already seen the Quins and Bears game and I'd already seen Wasps and Northampton. And I was like, well, I want to watch one more. I try to watch at least half the games, right? So I can go to get a feeling for what's going on. I was like, 33-32. I'll watch that one because that seems like a cracker based on the scoreboard. I knew nothing, nothing else about it. But... Watching the game, I even had to question if my memory was correct and that, like, say I'll actually finish within a point and if Gloucester did in fact win or not because, like, the end of the game, 
Like, it is mental. Like, it's tries through Morgan Singleton and two to Reese Zabbitt for, for Gloucester. So it's four tries. And then uh, for Sale, it's Quirk Reed, Dan Dupria, uh, War, and Taylor. So five tries for them. But look at the times of the tries. 75, 80, and 84. That's a lot of points to be putting on at the death. Whereas Gloucester's tries, three of the four in the first half. I mean, there were some... I mean, it's hard to compare to the, the, the Quins and Bears game because that was mental. But, like, Singleton getting a, uh, a cross-kick try, that was that was bizarre. I mean, again, good to see good players back, like the Dupree guys, like Reece Zammett. You know, all these Lions guys are back and, and starting, so that was kind of good. Um, I noticed both teams like a mall. Definitely like them all. Like I would have liked a little bit more variation sometimes. Like pretty much these these guys get a lineup in the twenty two, they're gonna truck it up no matter what. Like I feel like you keep other teams on their toes a little bit. If you set them all like four times, then the fifth time you spin it, all their forwards are so committed to shoving them all that their heads are buried, they can't see what you're doing. But that's just me. Uh, every time they seem to want to go for a um, go for the old mall. But like I said, there there still were some. Um, some worldies. Singleton from the cross kick, that was uh, that was one of them. Um, Reese Zammett got kind of smashed um, going for one of the balls with a, um, a sale guy. I forget who it was. The, the ref, ref uh, said it was kind of shoulder to shoulder, but it seemed like shoulder to shove to me. But anyway, um, there was kind of nothing doing there. Sale did eventually get on the board after kind of being behind for ages. Like I was all Gloucester for the first 20. And then it was kind of all sale, but sale kept knocking it on. It was quite frustrating to watch, actually. But eventually, uh, they did manage to convert um, that one try in the first half through Quirk, and it was like 20 points to 10 at half time. Interestingly, sale missed a conversion um, on one of their tries in the second half. There was the Reeds one, I think, which was pretty straightforward. And given that scoreline, it's kind of a. Um, it's kind of a brutal one, but uh, yeah, I mean, Gloucester had chances to finish it off, to be fair. Alamano could have had a try when he charged it down and couldn't quite um, couldn't quite actually go through the process to score the, the try after he'd done all the kind of the hard work. Um, there was another chance where Gloucester just needed to get it out to the left wing and Matt Moulds put his fat hands in it. Ended up knocking it on, so they, they probably should have put it to bed, although it looked to be to bed. That's what I'm talking about, like... Hastings kicks the drop goal on 71 to make it 33-15. And I was thinking, I must have remembered it wrong. Maybe this isn't a one-pointer. Maybe it's like 33-20. Maybe, maybe I'm remembering the, the, the Saris result or something. But, nah, man. They, they score try um, to, yeah, the, the, the try to Dupria, then the one to War, and then that last one at 84 minutes. But they missed the conversion. It's the mall try. They only scored the, the 80th minute one with like 20 seconds left on the clock. They had to take a drop goal from out wide and uh, missed it for the conversion. But they wanted to get the restart, which they did. And they still managed to score the try. So they got as close as you can get. Could have won it on another day, but not to be. Anyway, it was still a pretty cracking one. Interesting finish. I mean, Gloucester had a yellow card as well at the death. So yeah, pressure was on. Um, run meters finished 278 to 490. Uh, Gloucester a lot more kicking from hand, 37 to 22, but clean breaks was pretty even. Um, turnovers can see, like I mentioned, some of those knock-ons, like 21 to 9. Sale kind of guilty of not treasuring the pill. Uh, at times, Morgan, 32 run meters, three defenders beaten is a good shift. Luke James in the midfield, 90 run meters. Uh, a couple of defenders beaten good from him. The Russian prop, what's his name? Gotosev, 19 from 20 tackles. Also a very good shift. So, yeah, good result for Gloucester, although... Man, like way to concede three tries in the final five minutes. Kind of not good final ten, I guess, given the game went well into the red. But um, yeah, still a win's a win. Gloucester in fourth, two out of four. And uh, Sale, uh, a win, two losses, and a draw in ninth. They're at home to Quinns. And Quinns are in pretty good form, so it'll be tough. Uh, Gloucester are away to London Irish. Now, London Irish aren't doing that flash, but they're not, they're not getting hiding. So, yeah. Could be kind of interesting. Uh, speaking of London Irish, I've watched the highlights of that one. They lost to Leicester. Um, again, it's like, like I said, not a real hiding because 21-16 is a close game. Two tries to one. Uh, penalties kind of both ways. The lead changed a lot in this game. I've only seen highlights. 
But um, yeah, a lot of lead changes. Dolly gets another try. He seems to really love the try line. Leicester's another team that loves them all. Half time at six points to five. It's two penalties to the one try, unconverted. So kind of really tight stuff. Um, Leicester got one early in the second half from close range again. So it's 12 points to nine. But Krevi got one in reply, 16 12. Um, the lead changes were, were pretty um, common. Like I said, um, Ford's penalties, though, kind of sealed it. Um, I didn't think, from the highlights, I didn't think it looked likely that um, that London Irish were going to get a try at the death. Like a penalty, if it was in three, maybe. But it didn't look like they were going to score seven, to be fair. But again, it's hard to kind of say from highlights. Position finish is 50-50. A lot of kicking by the look of things. 38-41 to 41 is a tremendous amount of kicking. Um, tackling percentage 90-87, to 87, so a match for the defences, but... Uh, Leicester may have been doing the better of the kicking. You'll have to let me know because they had 63% territory, which is a fair bit. The most run meters of the game was Liedenberg, who's one of the two try scorers, along with Dolly, with um, with 65, which is not a heck of a lot. Remember, who did I mention had, like, was it um, Tyro Green at like 147 in what was a bonkers game in its own? But yeah, Wells, 13 from 13 tackles. Um, Parton seems to do pretty well always for London Irish. Four defenders beaten from him from the back. But um, yeah, still London Irish without a win. Three losses and a draw. They are in 11th. Leicester are top of the log. Four from four. So perfect start for the season from them. Apparently they haven't gone four from four to start a season in about 20 years. So that speaks to the form they are in at the moment. Uh, sale, not sale, Saracens in Newcastle. Again, I watched the highlights of this one. I haven't seen the whole thing. Um, seems like a pretty brutal one for Newcastle from what I've seen. Like, Right at the death, they were still within seven. They actually led uh, for quite a while. They had tries through Brown and Stevenson early on in the first half. Um, Saracens had a penalty try and then three tries in the second half. George and both the Vunipola brothers. Yeah, so Saracens end up with a four-try bonus point win at home, which is maybe what you would expect Saracens to be doing uh, to Newcastle when they're at home. But man, I don't think it's that fair a reflection of the game based on what I've seen anyway. Like Maitland got yellow carded. Uh, Newcastle got the try through Brown during the card, um, although I think Saracens had kicked a penalty during the card as well. Um, Newcastle's lead was 14-3 after like 20 minutes, so a really good start away from home. They have been having a good season, but um, yeah, Saracens just seemed to come back into it. Mellon's offload was not rewarded with a try when Newcastle kind of put in a massive effort to save uh, a potential try from for the Saracens guys. Really kind of good uh, determination from the guys. You don't get that from all your players in terms of the buy-in to put your bodies on the line and get back. But yeah, the penalty try um, meant it was 10 points to 17 at halftime. So Sarri's narrowing the gap. And then George's tap and go made it 17 points apiece. Exchange of penalties towards the end. But yeah, Billy V's try takes it from Newcastle getting a losing bonus point in a pretty good shift to the other end, which is Saracens getting a four-try bonus point win. So... I mean, congratulations to Saracens. It's a brutal one to take for, for Newcastle, but it's an 80-plus minute game. And um, Saracens did the job. So, yeah. Interesting, like, you guys will have to let me know. The penalty count was 8 to Saracens, 21 to Newcastle. Where were all those coming from? Turnovers conceded, though, for Saracens, 18 to 9. So it's both sides seemingly with a bit to answer for. I'm assuming both weren't quite at their best. Brown... 66 run meters, six defenders beating a clean break and a try. Not a bad shift for him, for his new team. And uh, Mallon's man, 114 run meters, two clean breaks, five defenders beating. I mentioned that offload, so yeah, it seemed to be pretty electric. But I mean, look at the try scorers for Saris, man. The Vinny Polis, George. So I mean, the penalty try could have been George's as well. So some Lions and um, former Lions and whatnot back in their squad. They are looking the business. So yeah, Saracens are seventh, two and one. But remember, they've had a bye already, so they are behind games behind teams on the number of games played. Newcastle are 2-2. Two and two. They are in 8th. They're at home to Bristol next week, which, as I mentioned, could be a pretty interesting game, given Newcastle are doing pretty well, and they're a hard place to go, and uh, Bristol going to be pretty desperate for a win. Uh, Saracens, they are away to Bath. Bath are on the bye. But Saracens coming to town won't be particularly pleasing for one of the other teams which doesn't have a win yet but anyway that's the penultimate one the last one was uh wasps in northampton i made sure to watch this one 26 points to 20 this one was a late try 
to uh, to get the losing bonus point more than anything else. It wasn't uh, it wasn't within a score of kind of um, Northampton getting a, uh, a sneaky win at the end. They they only managed to get within seven at the death. So it tries to kid Rigi and Robson uh, for Wasps and Matsavesi, Ludlam and Fish for um, for Northampton. It was a pretty helter skelter stuff early. There were intercepts, grubbers, a bit of loose ball. Um, Matsavesi got the first one with Augustus throwing a pretty nice offload, which was good to see. I'm seeing him do pretty well uh, since he's made the move north. But to be fair, it seemed like it had been coming. Northampton had the best of the early play. Um, I think there may have been more kicking in the first half of this game than in some of the other games in total. But the total kick count doesn't actually end up that high. It's like 29-28, which is high without being London Irish and, and Leicester high. But um, yeah, half times 10 apiece. Umanga had missed a pretty, a couple of straightforward penalties to be fair. Didn't have his best day with the boot. Um, but by 60 minutes, Wasps had a 10 point lead. They were looking, they were looking a, a fair bit sharper, even with the missed penalties. They could have been in front by even more. Um, Ogre's yellow card at, um, for a high tackle was maybe a bit lucky because the ref said it was indirect. I think the TMO thought it was red. But um, yeah, that was kind of what you thought maybe is going to get Northampton back into the game. Uh, they did manage to get the try. Um, but yeah, Wasps got two penalties during the yellow card as well. So I think they actually won the yellow card 6-5 to five because the try was unconverted for Wasps. So losing bonus point at the death for, for Northampton. I mean, it seemed like a pretty going through the motions one to be fair. It was just a standard maul. And um, the North, uh, sorry, the Wasps guys just couldn't really defend it. They were kind of all at sea. But yeah, they'll take the win for sure. They are in fifth, home to Exeter next week. Uh, Wasps and uh, Northampton are three and one. They are in third. So it's their first loss, and they are on the bike. Penalties conceded was 16 15, which is pretty high in that game, to be fair. Um, not sure what the deal was. Robson seems to be pretty sharp. Um, you know, cracked up a few run meters from only a handful of runs. Um, Freeman also looked pretty sharp as well. So yeah, pretty entertaining stuff. But I mean, it was a bit hard after that first game for anything else to live up to it. But it was certainly some entertaining stuff. Like the sale in the Gloucester game was also kind of bonkers. Um, Exeter's one was just a, a real hiding, wasn't it? I mean, proper arm wrestle stuff with Leicester. Newcastle, like I said, unfortunate. But sometimes them's the breaks and uh yeah good on northampton for fighting back to get that losing bonus point but anyway has been an interesting week in terms of the games we'll see how things go for the fifth round the season is um is playing out pretty nicely so there you go you guys let me know your thoughts especially on the games that um i didn't watch them for but definitely let me know your thoughts on that crazy first one the crazy third one as well and um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.